Hey guys, welcome to episode nine of Gentech. I'm excited for this episode because when I sent out my Gentech survey last year, one of the most requested tools was a tool that would help you visualize different aspects of your research. So for this episode, we're talking about Lucidchart, which is a great tool for allowing you to visualize all kinds of different aspects of your research. So we'll go with the usual formula, go through what Lucidchart is, why you would want to use it, and I'll go through a demo to show you how to use it. So Lucidchart is a tool for creating diagrams and flowcharts, and it allows you to create visualizations from scratch or to use a template. And you can also integrate it with other software through integrations, and you can collaborate and share all of these different documents and visualizations that you create with other people. So why would you want to use Lucidchart? It allows you to chart out your research plans. You can also create quick timelines, analyze your research leads, and even break down some relationships that you're finding within your research. Really, the sky's the limit with this tool. Anything you kind of want to just draft out or sketch out, you can do with this tool. So what's the catch? A lucid chart is a tool, like I said, for creating diagrams and for creating flowcharts. They have a variety of different plans that you can choose from, uh, free and paid plans, but you guys know me by now. I'm gonna suggest you start with the free plan first. Uh, with the free plan, you're only limited to their 100 templates that they have. Of course, they have way more, but you can only access those if you use the paid plans. And you can only have three editable documents open at a time. So what that means is you can only create three documents and continue to update them. Uh, if you create a document and you want to finalize it, you can just export it as like a, a PDF file or something like that. And then you could create another editable document if you'd like to. But you're limited to only three of those editable documents. All right, let's go ahead and jump into that demo. So to get to Lucidchart's website, you're going to want to go to lucidchart.com. And here they just provide you with a summary of what their tool does. So they really tout uh, being able to create any kind of visualizations that you want. So whether it's flow charting or doing all kinds of different mappings for different processes or even, even like organization chart design, uh, this tool is great for different industries. A bunch of companies use this tool apparently, so there's that. And then it also tells you other aspects of this tool that you can use. So here they're talking about those integrations that you might want to uh, incorporate with this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my account. I think I'm already logged in. Um, again, I have the free plan because I don't feel like paying for, for money for this, but uh, on my dashboard here, it tells me about a new uh, feature, I guess, that they've designed that you could try out if you'd like. And they also provide some recommendations for templates and things at the bottom. And if at any time you wanna learn how to uh, do different things with this tool, they do have lots of videos that you can, you can watch. So to get started, you can go ahead and press the new button if you'd like. But first, I wanna show you some of the templates that they have. So like I said, with the free plan, you are limited to only 100 of those templates, and they have them separated out into different categories here. So they have flowcharts, mind maps, all kinds of different diagrams and things like that. So if I click on mind maps, it's only gonna let me choose three of them because they want me to pay money to use the rest of these. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on this mind map with lines to show you kind of how this works. So they show you a image of what that mind map is gonna look like. You can click show more to see any other um, diagrams that are similar to this one. I'm gonna just open this template. And on all of these loading screens, they do show you some tips and tricks to uh, further enhance uh, what you're able to do with this tool. And over here on the right, they will also provide you with links to other tutorials as well. I'm gonna close this out. Now with this diagram here, they've already put the template there for me. They try to put some instructions to basically um, 
drag the shape to duplicate it so I can create multiples of this shape. But if you were to use this for family history research, you could use it in a couple of different ways, right? You could use it to kind of chart out your, your research plan, uh, what you've already done research on, whether it's research on a particular community or research on a particular person or event. Maybe that would be something that you would want to put in the middle of this mind map and then have different branches leading out from that topic. You can also use this as a way to illustrate or further explore relationships between other individuals uh, in your research. So for example, maybe I want to, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see that a little bit better. I'll zoom out. So maybe here, instead of this main idea default that they have, I want to put the name of an individual that I wanna focus on. Because that's what you always wanna put in the middle of your, your mind map. All right, so I'm putting the name of one of my ancestors here. And for this mind map, I think I'm gonna focus on relationships she's had with other individuals. So she lived to be 107 years old, so there are a whole bunch of different people that she uh, grew to know as she went, out, went throughout her life. So maybe here I wanna visualize those individuals. So for this subtopic, maybe I'm gonna say children. And maybe here I'll say her siblings. And then here maybe neighbors. And then maybe this one, I'll just say eh, friends, I suppose. Okay, so here I can kind of start just visualizing all of the individuals she knew over her lifetime. So this is really great because I'm not limiting myself to the traditional family tree. I can kind of just spread out all of these different relationships and look at them in one page. So for her children, I can start listing them out if I'd like. So if I click on this dot here, I get these little corners with these circles. So I want to click on the one that is in the direction that I want to draw my line. So I'll click on this one and drag out that line here. Okay. And then uh, in order to create a circle, I can either click here to create it or you can click on the circle that you want and just copy it and paste it where you want to put it. So for this one, I'm just going to click and drag it and put it at the end of this line. So it automatically connects it for me. Then to put text on it, I can click on this text on the left and click and drag it over that line. So for here, I'm going to type another individual's name. Maybe move that out a little bit. Okay. And then I'm actually going to change the color of this so it matches the color of the other branches on this line. Same kind of thing for other individuals. So if I want to start mentioning some of her neighbors. And these individuals may not even be related to each other. And so that's the beauty of mind mapping because really you're focusing on this main person in the middle here and you're branching out from that person. So anything related to this person you would want to put on these branches. Now I want to show you guys a different type of mind map that may also be useful. This one is very much focused on one particular individual. You could also use this mind map to focus on a particular community. So you may have like the community's name here and then maybe you want to focus on different families from that community or different businesses or other aspects of this community. So maybe one branch could be families and you list the family names over here 
maybe one branch over here could be businesses and you list those over here, all kinds of stuff. But what I'm gonna do is focus a little bit more on uh, research and your research strategy with this next document. So I'm going to close this out and I'm gonna go here I'm in the template section. We have documents and then we have home. And then if I click on plus new, I wanna do plus new lucid chart document. Now also know that you could also do start with a template and that would allow you to grab like that mind map template that I used in the previous example. So I'll do lucid chart document. And it gives me a very blank screen, which is perfectly fine. This is what I want. Over here on the left, you have all of these different shapes you can pull from. So you have the text, you have a square, um, you have a sticky note. I'm not really sure what a hotspot is, but you have that too. Uh, you have a line, all of these different kinds of shapes. Now for this, like I said, I'm gonna be focusing on the research of let's say a particular individual that I'm focused on. Maybe I want to examine all of the sources that I've looked at so far um, and essentially visualize my research log. So I'll click on this square here and drag it over here. If I double click on the text, I can type in whatever I want. So I'm focusing on one particular individual And I can change the shape, as you can see, by clicking and dragging on these little squares here. And so it's important to note that there is a difference between these squares because they will adjust the shape. And then these circles, which will basically allow you to draw lines out from that shape. So I do wanna keep this line. Um, if I do push it up, notice that it follows this grid in the background so it can adjust its shape appropriately. Now, if I want it to be straight, of course, I can just continue to drag it um, to the right. For this, I think I'll just have it a little bit angled. And at the very end of this point, it prompts me to either add a uh, text or to add a box here. So I'll click box and I'll enter in whatever text I want. So for this individual, I'm gonna type vital records. And like I said, I'm essentially visualizing my research log for this individual. So if there are any vital records that I found for this person, I wanna make note of them here. So I'll draw another line from vital records. And then same thing, you wanna click on the box if you'd like. I have found this individual's death certificate, so I'm just making a note of it here. And then if I go back to vital records, let's say I want to put in another point. And for this point, I want to say marriage certificate. I actually have not found this person's marriage certificate. So I'm putting a question mark here. And then if I want to further denote that this is something I haven't found yet, but I need to, I could change the colors of this if I'd like. So maybe I want the text to be, I don't know, like, maybe a red color or something like that, or I could even change the background. So I'm gonna just make this kind of a yellow color. And for the text, I think I'm gonna put it back to black. There we go. So that kind of stands out to me to know, okay, this is a research lead that I should probably follow. And if I go back to this individual, I'm actually gonna change his color too since this is the main point that everything is coming from, it allows me to quickly refocus myself to the main idea of this uh, diagram. So I'm gonna change this to gray, and I'm gonna pull out another point from this shape. So for this point, I'm gonna focus on census records and make this a little bit smaller and do the same kind of thing. So. I know I found several census records for him. I'm not gonna list all of them. So I did find an 1880 census record with, I think his parents are in there. So I think this might be him. Um, because I'm unsure, I'm gonna just make this a different color. Uh, 
I'll just say maybe this light green. And having these different colors is definitely something that you kind of want to organize beforehand. So you have your own kind of way to um, essentially categorize these different aspects of your research log. I do know that I definitely found him in the 1900 census. Now I'm just putting 1900 census record. Um, of course you can be much more specific than that if you'd like. Um, but for the purposes of this presentation, I'm just making it as brief as possible. Okay, so I could also include other kinds of records. So I have found this individual in books before. So maybe I want a book section for my research log. And then here I would list the names of those books. So I can't recall the book title off the top of my head, but I'll just call this book one. And if you get inspired from any of these leads and it makes you think of other things that you can search for, you could definitely take this out even further and build off other branches as well. So for example, with the marriage certificate, um, maybe I get other ideas of other ways to validate or figure out when this individual got married. I could pull out an arrow here off of marriage certificate. And then maybe I think, well, this person was a preacher. Maybe there were also church records that announced the marriage of this individual and his wife. And so I'm also going to put this in yellow just because I haven't found those yet and I want to check those out. So as you can see, there are so many different things that you can map out, uh, especially as it relates to your research log. It kind of just depends on the things that you'd like to map out and how organized you are and the things that are important to you. So I highly suggest you check out this tool, play around with it. Um, there are a ton of different features, like you can change the font of things, you can change the size, basically your basic formatting options. And when you're done with everything, you can go to file and you can export it as a PDF. You can even choose how you want it to be cropped in the PDF if you just want to get a portion, get the portion that has your content in there, or if you want to create a custom crop. So if you wanted to choose uh, how big that PDF document should be, I'm going to choose full canvas and then do download. Now you can also share this diagram with other individuals. You just go to share and you can do add collaborator. You type in the title, so I'll say research log for this guy. And then you can just add in the email addresses of the people that you want to share this with. Or you can even do get shareable link and copy and share this link with other individuals. Now you can also adjust the permissions. So whoever has access to this link uh, can have any of these permissions that you set. So another great feature of Lucidchart is once you've created your diagram, you can also create notes on things by clicking on insert and then note. And then you can type whatever notes you want here. So if you want to provide additional information about where to find certain vital records, you could say something like that here. If you get tired of seeing this menu over here on the left, you can click on this shape here and it will hide that menu for you. So if you really want to be able to see um, your diagram better, you can do that. You can also click on this full screen button at the bottom right and it will show you your diagram in full screen. So you can kind of just click through or scroll through. You can also hit the space bar and essentially move your mouse. So you want to hold the space bar down, move your mouse, and you can move around the screen as well. 
And that's it for this episode. If you like what you saw, you learned something good, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Olivia Peacock. Give me a like, give me some comments, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.